Well, 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 good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to you lovely folks joining me here nice and early over at Marvel Snap Zone. We have just left the Savage Lands, and the Quantum Mania season is finally here. And you know what that means new season pass cards to play with, more things to be excited about coming down the progression track, and Z Zabu, Zabu everywhere. Somewhat unfortunately, the expected balance changes to both Silver Surfer and Zabu have yet to take place inside the Marvel Snap game client. We know they're on the way, but unfortunately it does mean that most people's game experience for now looks a little bit like it did last season. But as mentioned, we know those buffs and nerfs are on the way. So today, I want to start exploring some of the decks I think have the best chance of being real meta contenders when those changes happen. Of course, there'll be plenty of Modoc discard decks to take a look at in the near future as we get our teeth into the new Battle Pass card. But today, I want to focus on a deck that had some success in the hands of one player at the end of last season on their journey up to infinite. Let's take a look at Thanos ongoing. I think this deck kind of has my attention for a number of reasons here. So first of all, shout outs to Holy Diva, well-known magic streamer who had success with this archetype at the end of last season, used it to make the climb all the way up to infinite. And I think this deck is very sweet and still mostly underexplored by a number of players and really does have a good chance of becoming a real contender in the absence of the power of Silver Surfer and Zabu. So if you're not familiar somehow with Thanos, Thanos at this point is one of the most iconic big bads in the Marvel Universe and is one of the kind of linchpins of Series 5 for the most part, a card many people have upped the buck to buy because they know it's not going to be reducing anytime soon. He does give us access to six Infinity Stones at the start of a game, and these have a variety of effects. They can do things from drawing more stones for you, to giving you extra energy, to moving stuff around, to reducing the power of your opponent's stuff, to changing locations, to overall just making Thanos a very, very big boy. Normally the Power Stone, not a card that really does very much in most situations, but this time around, 18 Power Thanoses are actually very, very possible. The key here being... A few of these stones have ongoing abilities. We're looking to abuse those ongoing abilities by becoming somewhat of a zoo style strategy with the infinity stones, using them to activate powerful effects that care about how many cards we have and also provide us with some payoffs for going wide. The most interesting of these to me, and the reason to be an ongoing strategy, is Spectrum. Spectrum, a card that really hasn't found a home outside of Destroyer Shells in recent memory, but this one plays very, very well with a number of ongoing cards in the deck, a number of ongoing Infinity Stones provided by Thanos, and is a fantastic card to pull off at any point during the game from Lockjaw. Lockjaw is kind of the other engine in this deck. It provides us a way to turn our stones into real cards, and sometimes turn our stones back into other stones and draw more cards. Logjaw, of course, provides you the ability to high roll many locations with many big cards way, way ahead of time, and the stones provide us with many cheap things to provide to Logjaw to turn into something else. In terms of other Anthem effects that reward us for going wide, we've actually got quite a few in this deck. Blue Marble kind of perfect in every way for this. It's an ongoing card to receive a buff from Spectrum and provides its bonus to every single card we have in play, not just the Infinity Stones. Kazar, not quite as strong in that regard, but our deck and our board is going to be full of one-cost cards pretty regularly because, again, we have Infinity Stones everywhere. So basically just another copy of Blue Marvel that also plays very well with our Spectrum. Last but not least, we've got these early payoffs in the form of Ant-Man and Mojo. These two cards care about locations having four cards on them, something that we're very capable of doing with this many cheap and efficient cards in our deck. More importantly, they're also both ongoing effects, meaning they will also receive a buff from a Spectrum being played. Quinjet also meets the bill here, another ongoing card to receive those buffs that plays very, very well with our Thanos stones, making them all cost zero over the course of a game. Last but not least, we've got just good utility anti-meta cards that all happen to have ongoing abilities. Armor, Lizard, and Cosmo all see play in a number of decks in Marvel Snap. Armor and Cosmo just great at interacting, especially Cosmo right now, at shutting down all those cheeky Modoc players. And Lizard, just a fantastic rate on a two-cost body that also happens to be yet another ongoing effect. Now, why do I think this deck will shine in the absence of things like Silver Surfer and Zabu? Well, 
Thanos has always been an exceptionally powerful strategy, um, kind of mostly underexplored because people don't have access to the card or weren't really sure how to build it. The sad truth is this deck suffered a little bit at the hands of Dark Hawk being popular. It turns out putting a whole extra chunk of cards into your deck when your opponent cares about how many cards are in your deck is normally not the best way to go. And Lockjaw kind of suffers at the hands of rocks being sprayed into your deck as well. In the absence of Zabu, hopefully we can see more of... You know, no Dark Hawk. More, 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 less Dark Hawk is probably the way that I'm going to choose to put it. Which means that we should hopefully have more game into the average room. Uh, I think the thing that might keep this deck at bay, however, is the fact that well, we might be a little bit soft to Killmonger, and I also expect Bayro to be a deck on the resurgence in the absence of Zabu and and Silver Surfer because there is no leader to keep it in check anymore, which might mean a tick up in popularity of Killmonger. So we're going to start with some gameplay of this one today, and you can let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Leave a comment. Are you excited about this deck? Do you want to try it for yourself? Do you think it can be a real contender in the meta game moving forward, before or after you see those games? If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing subscribing to the channel would be lovely to see you for more things Marvel Snap in the near future and with all that said and done let's head onto the ladder play some games of Thanos ongoing and see how this one goes all right let's get ourselves cooking with a little bit of Thanos ongoing I, I love this archetype I've loved the the Lockjaw Thanos Thanos Zoo style decks for a very long time and I'm very eager to see whether or not they can uh, have a mighty resurgence in the face of, of uh, a new meta shortly we we hope um so pretty interesting start for us here we're, we're very good at filling up the raft so i imagine we're supposed to contest it and go for it opponent would also like to quinjet so maybe we have some kind of uh mirror match going on here lack of stones in our hand early is, is it's pretty bad actually good chance our opponent fills up the raft before us now so korg putting a rock in our deck again not really a thing we want to see uh courtesy of you know being a Lockjaw deck. Okay, so we gain the Sacred Timeline. This one is the brand new featured location that will give us a copy of our opening hand if we can fill it. Now, I think this should be pretty good for this deck as well in general, but obviously our current hand is pretty naff at doing uh, doing exactly that. So we'll see how we go. Let's see if we can actually find some stones. The Mind Stone is the best one to find in that case. So let's go... Cosmo over here, sink the Mind Stone, and hopefully we can fill both of these towards the end of next turn. That would be very nice. So Soul Stone, Power Stone. Mind Stone getting sunk, pulls up a Time Stone, draws us yet another card. No Moon Girl for the opponent. Get, get bent. Okay, so we don't want to sink the Blue Marvel, so we probably have to accept that it gets shrunk by Jotunheim. But I think the plan here is to go Soul Stone, Power Stone, Space Stone. It's quite a good turn. So we both fill this raft up into... Oh, that sucks so bad. I get so punished for not putting the Space Stone off in the raft because I can't play this Giganto anywhere now. So we put up the Mojo in the Sacred Timeline. Opponent has the Dark Hawk. Unsurprisingly, our deck is very full. I do really wish we just uh, played that in a slightly different order and, and, and sunk the Soul Stone, but unfortunate, I suppose. So we have a few options here, truth be told. We've got a lot of ongoing over here in the raft. I think we can possibly just steal it with a Spectrum. The question is if we're supposed to sink this Spectrum for something else. So we could find Kazar. How many cards have we got in our deck here? Six. Jeez, okay, that's pretty bad. Uh, we could find Kazar, we could find Ant-Man. We could also just end up finding like a rock, which would be pretty crap. I think I just want a Spectrum here. And we can we can sink a Mind Stone. So what we should do here is sink the Mind Stone first, right? That's just strictly speaking better. In case we flip an ongoing card off the uh, the lockjaw. So we hit the space stone. Spectrum goes to work. Adds some juice across the board. Looks like we might have stolen this one because our opponent didn't think they could lose left. Yep, free Thanos is no good for you. Look at that. We, we fought over the raft. 
failed failed to play the card we got from the raft because it was a giganto and still managed to spike this by uh by stealing left but we go again time to do some more ridiculous degenerate thanos -y nonsense Whew. opening hand here not really the best but we do play pretty well into kill and we have a lot of cheap efficient threats to pick up buffs later from a spectrum, uh, so pretty pretty good at doing exactly that. So I think we're just going to get this lizard in kiln over here. Should be kind of hard for my opponent to fill this location up before uh, before kiln goes to work. Miniaturized lab is pretty crap, unfortunately. Um, so I think what we're going to do is go. Winjet. So the question is, like, how do we want to do this, right? Because we can... If we don't expect our opponent to fill Kiln, we shouldn't be playing the Mojo into Kiln, because it will never get turned on. So I think we do this. Opponent does Lockjaw in the middle. They are ready to do some hot nonsense as well. Okay, so do we just turn this off? I don't think we do... Maybe we do. This is genuinely kind of tough. I actually think I want to turn this off. Fill our board with stuff. The hub gives me some things to do. Dagger is not great. Dagger was not really what I was hoping to see. We have found ourselves with many, many stones. We've also found ourselves with a lockjaw. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is go Devil Dinosaur and then look to just chain gun the lockjaw in the miniaturized lab on the final turn. I feel like my opponent is about to do the same here with their, their lockjaw. Probably with like Lady Sif or something. So they have a Heimdall in their deck. Very cool. It was given to them by the hub, clearly. Colleen Wing going to work. Hits an Ice Man. So no, no swarm. That Colleen is beautiful, though. Okay, Modok just hits it all. Very nice Inkified Apoc. So opponent's hand is just the Apocalypse. We don't know what they've drawn because they drew an America Chavez, and we don't actually know what that uh, that entails. But we are just gonna absolutely chain gun this final turn. Let's go. Blue Marvel flips up. So we actually should have uh, Mind Stoned second to redraw a stone again. Wow, dude. Yeah, so we're actually one card short in our hand here of where we should be because we should have drawn another stone from the Mind Stone. But uh, hitting Blue Marvel Spectrum there is pretty good. Opponent shrinking down the dino but hopefully not by enough let's find out lockjaw do, does what lockjaw does yeah wolverine not not a valid consideration still winning mid look at that blue marvel spectrum just going to town on the final turns lockjaw like chain gun very much exactly what i want to see monster isle is like fine i think we'll just set up a soul stone Excuse me, set up a soul stone somewhere other than Monster Isle right now. Because I'm not worried about this soul stone dying for the most part. I just want to cantrip through my deck. And I don't really want to be putting one cost cards in the Monster Island lane if I can afford it. Because I think I'm probably going to have to fight this. Well, okay. Sacred Timeline is pretty hot. Don't think we want to reality stone it away. We're probably just always going to fill it before the other person if we want to. Whatever well, the collector makes me think they're probably on some modoki nonsense over there on the other side. Parker! Oh, I got the wrong voice line. Fair enough. So, we have gained a Wong. Opponent's 
stuff gets bigger as a result. We can actually play this early because of the time stone if we want to. Feels like that's a bit good, honestly. And then we move it out to try and hit the spectrum. Yeah, okay, I'm game. Turn three Wongers. Not going to complain. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go Space Stone here to be able to move the Wong out. And we're looking for our Spectrum, basically. There it is. Miniaturized Lab is not what I had in mind, admittedly. So we move the Wong out. Opponent snaps. Yeah, Miniaturized Lab actually really punished us here, unfortunately. Kind of sucks. I think we're just going to Dino mid. Opponent will Modoc. Does indeed make some swarms. So we know the hand is Swarm Swarm Modoc going. Uh, sorry, sorry, Swarm Swarm Apoc going into this turn. Which means we're probably. They want to hold the Apoc to win mid, right? That's the thing. All right. Perfect. Look at that. Double spectrum coming in clutch from our opponent's uh, our opponent's Wong, huh? Being gifted a copy of Wong from uh, from Daily Bugle and just getting to double spectrum all your stuff. It gets you over the, the, the swarm lane, even with Lizard being shrunk. I'll take my full cubes, thank you very much. Very, very nice. You have Lockjaw, right? Speaking of the devil, it's in our hand. Well, this hand is pretty good too because we can turbo the lock draw up we just get to play it on turn two which is pretty great murder world let's get ourselves set up and ready to go a lot of our cheap goodies that aren't stones currently in our hand which is exactly where you want to be for a, a big lock draw game Tinker as well. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're going to snap. I think we're, we're going to town here. Okay, drawing the blue marble, not ideal, but we can work with that. So we'll go... Lizard, Quinjet, Space Stone. Opponent is on the Electro plan, sure. We draw our spectrum now. Space Stone sinks, pulls a Cosmo for us. Well, I was hopeful this was going to be really good if they are on Galactus because they, they had nowhere to go. But I can only really put the Cosmo in one place, which is unfortunate. I think I'm moving it over and double sinking over here. Drawing the dino, not really what I had in mind. Space Stone gives us some more flexibility here again, though. Reality Stone's pretty good. So Punish is looking to be more like traditional Electro Ramp, by the looks of it, than, than the alternative. So I'm going to move a stone out here. We're going to go Blue Marble Mindstone. Draw some stones, sink again. Pull up our mojo. Opponent will Doctor Doom. 
Send some Doom bots across the board. I am going to Power Stone, Soul Stone, Spectrum. Ah, we drew the Thanos. Okay, here in the Kazar is still pretty nuts, admittedly. I wanted to pull the Thanos off the Lockjaw really bad, but... Alas, it appears that I'm not allowed to do that. Higher, further, faster, baby. Thankfully changing basically nothing here. And we're all Gucci for our cubes. Very smooth. Well, the, the big man turned, and you definitely could have pulled him here uh, on the final turn of the game to, to get 18 power, but uh, we shouldn't complain. We shouldn't complain. Nice. I would like to see it. All right. We'll, we'll soul stone here with the intention of time stoning on two in order to Kazar on three. Wish I hadn't now because I drew a lock draw, but that's, that's fine. So this is still pretty good, right? Because we get to... We get to lock draw into reality stone on turn three. Final scorpion us. It's a little annoying, but sure. Uh, I would like to not have TVA be a thing I have to worry about this game. So I'm going to remove it. I'm going to take my equity, though. Because my opponent might just retreat here because they can't beat TVA. And so we'll snap and try and scare them off while we have the chance. They stick around. They get fantastic, sure. No more TVA. No more Titan either. Okay, so I don't want to risk Lockjaw dying here, to be honest. Seems kind of unnecessary. So we'll just move it over. A little bit of Kazar as a treat. Grow some stones here. Hands a bit full of stuff we would rather be in our deck. But uh, we can work with this. The Juggernaut's fine. It means we lose a space stone, but we're okay with that. So our turn five this game can be a number of things, but I think it's probably just supposed to be Devil Dinosaur. Hand is quite full currently. Looks like opponent is probably on, excuse me, Sarah Surfer of some sort. Kind of the, the deck that comes to mind looking at the Juggernaut plus Mr. Fantastic game plan. Indeed, the Sarah would suggest that is correct. And sadly, we draw the Thanos on the final turn as well. So it is time for us, I think, to get a little bit fruity and see how far we can go with this. So I think the plan for me is actually to try and spike the surfer or the brood. One of the two. And then we're just going to windmill. <coughs> <coughs> I, think that's, I think that's where I am in this particular case. And obviously hitting the spectrum here is kind of Christmas land. Wish I'd hit it second, but certainly not complaining. The Ant-Man is less than ideal, unfortunately. But we are beating this dino currently. Oh! Maximus! Thank you. I mean, to be fair, we were winning middle as well. But, uh... Look at that. 
Maximus refilling our hands for the Dino Tanks here as well. Thank you, Spectrum. Thank you very, very much, Spectrum. We appreciate you. I think there is definitely some work to be done moving forward as we understand what the metagame looks like after Zabu, after Silver Surfer. But as you can see in today's video, we beat both of those decks on several occasions while playing it, and it, it can hold its own there. The problem is definitely that it is weak to these Dark Orc strategies and these Killmonger strategies that can definitely give you a really bad time. Uh, no big purple man game. It goes to show you that Thanos really isn't here for his body a lot of the time, uh, which is good. No one should ever be here for their body. Um, the stones are definitely where it, what it's all about, but having another big America Chavez style idiot to hit off of Lockshaw definitely comes up. Uh, as much as it didn't come up too much for us today. Uh, but let me know what you think. If you think this deck is cool, whether you think you're going to be playing it yourself, uh, leave a comment for me in the comment section down below. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel here on Marvel Snap Zone by pressing the button. Turn on your notifications, all that wonderful jazz in the process. And if you want to see more of this deck, you can probably come and join me tonight at 6.30pm GMT for a live stream here on the channel where I'll almost certainly be playing some more of it. But until then, I have been Howling Minds. You've been amazing. And this has been Marvel Snap Zone. Take care of yourself. Have a good one.